crude laboratory in the basement of his home. So what's going on? Oh my goodness. Uh, like everything life, life has been really good. Yeah. I I went and got my, um, certification to be a master practitioner of NLP and a bunch of other cool stuff and really just been diving into personal development, like, you know, 10 X. So feel really good about that. Excited to be on this. I am, uh, really proud of you. I've seen your numbers just like start climbing. Like your Instagram has grown. Your, your LinkedIn has grown. Uh, you're putting out content like a madman. So props to you. Well, being unemployed helps with that. Um, there you go. <laughs> so, so that's, that helps. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, when I feel like my life is in chaos, which, you know, when the company that was your baby gets shut down, like completely unbeknownst to you and you're shocked by that, uh, like one day you have your thing and the next day you don't. Uh, yeah. quite literally, um, you know, it generates chaotic feelings, right? And and I'll say, this is what, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, why do you put all this content out? I get that from lo- local people. You know what I mean? I think people who know me professionally and have like seen kind of the way that I am outside of this area, uh, the Albany area, uh, maybe get it a little more, but like inside of Albany, like I don't have a big network in the Albany area. Like, mm-hmm. and, and in the area, most people, they know, mostly know me as like a kid's coach. <laughs> and so... Um, when they see me putting out like personal development stuff or whatever. And one of the things that I found over the last six months or so, or maybe even, maybe even longer than that is that, uh, and, and, and I, I want to someday, I don't have the time now, but someday I want to write a book about this or do something bigger, uh, more, um, with some longevity to it around the idea that, uh, I think we misunderstand why we do these things. I think there's a general misunderstanding or a topic that is not addressed enough when it comes to personal development. I'm super interested in your take on this too. I see it all as preparation. I think too often we wait for something bad to happen. We have a health scare. Our wife, you know, leaves us or our husband or, you know, our boyfriend or whatever, our, our, someone in our family, some major awful thing happens. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're like, I gotta get it together. I gotta, do this and do that. And unfortunately, at that point, it's it's not too late so much as you can't get better, but it's too late to stem off the emotional tidal wave that you are going to feel. And what I have found by consistently focusing on personal development, uh, by focusing on physical health, mental health, habits, discipline, all, all these things, is that when I found out that they were shutting Rogue down, I wasn't even really upset. I was disappointed. I thought it was a shame because when you look at our numbers, we probably rank top 5% in the country in terms of growth rate. I mean, we grew our agency from 170,000 in revenue April, 2022 to 695,000 in revenue in uh, September of 2023. So that's, three and a half X growth in 17 months. I mean, I would put that up against just an entirely organic um, and done off a relatively small marketing budget. I would put that up against the other agency in the country. So looking at that side, it's a shame because I feel like we were close. Now I understand why they did it and I'm not knocking them. And and I have very positive feelings towards SIA and I, you know, there's no hard feelings towards them. They did what they had to do for what they were going through. It's all, it's fine. But what I didn't do was fall apart. And Mm -hmm. that to me is why we do this work and why we do it before there's a problem. Um, And I feel like we don't talk about that enough. What is your take on all that? I think a thousand percent. I think the, the last maybe couple of months, what I am learning is specifically in Western culture, they teach us what you, what you want to grow up to have, what you want to grow up to, to do. Right. And there's this famous saying about we are human beings, not human havings or human doings, right? So it's more of a question of who do you want to be? So a lot of other cultures teach you from a young age your your purpose. You know, you are you are here to go find your purpose. You know, and and uh, I would say probably you and I were taught, well, what do you what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, what kind of things do you want to have? So here we are focused on you know, material things and, you know, some skills, but not necessarily interpersonal skills. 
and nothing, definitely no self-reflection. You know, I definitely didn't learn or even understand what that was up until very recently. And so I think to circle back to what you're talking about is it's a lot of knowing who you are and your boundaries and your values and being able to stay true to those. You know, that way, if, if you're in a place that are not aligning with that, you know, you can, you know, pivot and get out. Um, if something's, you know, not going the way you want it to, you can still stay within your, you know, your limits, so to speak. Um, I, you know, props to you for not having a, it may be as, as a reaction that maybe some others would, you know, <laughs> I think uh, it's definitely, you know, I, and I follow a lot of your stuff, you know, on Instagram and, and LinkedIn and the stuff that you post. And there's a lot of very, you know, a lot, a lot of stoicism, um, which I like to subscribe to as well. And I think it's a matter of, you know, how do you react to something rather than, um, you know, something, something that you can't control basically. Yeah. 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 I think I do love stoicism. I think I found personally that a mix of stoicism, Christianity, but like from the Bible Christianity, not derived Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, which we can talk about the difference, my personal opinion of what the difference of that is. And then a little bit of like Emerson, like, uh, what is it? Transcendentalism, um, mm -hmm. which is moves. It's tough to put Christianity and transcendentalism together, but there are some really interesting takes. And, and if you mash those three together, in my opinion, I get I get this really interesting for me worldview. This is the this is the problem I, that I have. If you go pure Bible, and I have friends who who love who are who are devout, and I think it's amazing. I think whatever framework works for you is exactly what you have. And I'm and I'm a believer, and I talk to God, and I, I read the Bible almost every day, right next to my bed. But I struggle with the purist. Those words are the words of God. Piece because yeah. it, I just. I have a hard time with the fact that it was written over 300 years by possibly thousands of different people. And like the selections were handpicked and we don't, I want to know what did they throw out and why did they throw it out? Because there was, there are all kinds of obscure records around things that were written that just weren't put in and they don't know what they were and they, but they know there were things that were written that didn't make it in the book. So like, and it's been translated through different languages over and over again. And yes. if it's a literal translation versus some like a metaphor yes. of some sort, you know, it definitely can be misconstrued. And take the word, take the word. I'll tell you one that uh, I was just listening to Jordan Peterson on Chris Williamson's podcast the other day. And, and I, I devour uh, Jordan Peterson. Um, and he is talking about this idea of the word meek. So mm -hmm. meek shall inherit the earth is a very well-known and uh, uh, passage from the Bible. And there, he he is of the opinion, and I believe him because I've done the research uh, after I heard this, that we completely misunderstand this um, this the the, the, the the scriptures longer, but this particular phrase, this idea of meek, is completely mistranslated and misunderstood because today meek means like mild, inward. Um, you know, we think of someone who can't defend themselves, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a hundred percent not what the original word, what meek actually meant, originally translated from the Greek word. It's not what it meant. What meek actually meant was someone who was a warrior, but sheathed their sword, right? So, mm. so that his whole thing of be a monster, right? But know how yeah. to control it. That is right. actually his derivation from this piece of scripture, the meek shall inherit in the earth. And what it meant to the Greeks when they wrote it was the word meek translated in, in from Greek in that time period, right? 2000 years ago meant someone who was strong and robust and a warrior and can defend themselves, but knew when to keep their, their sword sheath. So basically what, if you, if you then read, reread that scripture with that meaning, you're like, Whoa, this makes completely totally different. Yeah. Totally different. Right. So it's like, I feel like if, the Bible is our, and, and again, people who love the Bible are going to, are going to hate this, <laughs> but, but, and my mom and I debate this all the time, but like, um, I feel like you have to have your own relationship with God and you can't take the Bible as the only input as to how to live your life, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So yeah. that's a very long winded way, especially because I'm coming back from the gym. You can tell my ADD HD is off the charts. I love it. Saying that it yes. Stoicism, transcendentalism, essentialism, all mixed in uh, with a core of Christianity tends to be a 
pretty decent framework for living your life. Yeah, thousand percent. I would say that. So the event that I went to last month was really cool. Was such a diverse group of people. And, you know, some of the topics we talk about is, you know, spirituality and they do a really good job of, you know, leaving it open for, for everybody's different type. And, uh, as you know, I, I love music, right. And one of my, one of my favorite musicians that I really look up to was Ronnie James Dio. And a lot of people, he caught a lot of flack because a lot of people said, oh my gosh, it's, you know, devil music. He worships Satan. And, uh, you know, when you listen to his interviews, it's, it's quite the opposite. I think he's a very spiritual guy, um, but, but leaves room for, you know, what else could be out there. There's a line in one of his songs that says, we pray to someone, but when it's said and done, we're really all the same. They're really all the same with just a different name. It, it, yeah. You know, so it all kind of comes back down to that, that core, a lot of different beliefs still, still point the same, similar way. You know, they still have those values that, that everybody's still going after. Yeah. I, so, um, the event that you went, you know, you said you just got NLP certified. I don't know what that is. Yes. Yep. So paraphrased NLP is the programming in your brain. So your unconscious or your subconscious, however you want to call it, uh, basically programming in your brain to develop lasting changes or habits. So prior to learning NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, I, I okay. really followed Lanny Basham's mental management. Uh, he's got a book called With Winning in Mind, which is one of those books that really changed my life. Basically, he teaches how your unconscious mind and your subconscious really drive everything that you do and then how to manage that, you know, come uh, time to perform, you know, uh, so times under stress, you know, how you view yourself doing things. Uh, so really the, learning NLP just validated all the stuff that I already kind of followed and really just helped me. I, I went in with an open mind and went in with, with uh, it was so much fuller. I'll say that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. They have all these different techniques to change habits in different ways. So whether it's a strategy that you have, uh, towards feeling motivation or towards, uh, you know, basically how you do things and reprogramming the strategies that you take to get there. Uh, cause let's say it's something that you're a procrastinator, right? You can use anchoring techniques. So if you follow like Tony Robbins at mm -hmm. all, he uses yeah, a lot great. of these yeah. techniques and things like that. What'd you say? No, I just was, I was, um, uh, reinforcing your point. Yes. He uses oh. anchoring quite a bit. Yeah. Tony awesome. Robinson. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Huge. So, so we learned how to do that. We learned how to, basically it's a lot of, it's about visualization, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others. The, so the whole reason I went to it, cause this is, this is a question I get a lot is Kimmy, what the heck? Why, why'd you go to that? Uh, yeah, yeah. about a year and a half ago, I was introduced to NLP and it was sold to me in a way of, hey, you can become a better communicator. And I'm like, heck yeah, let's go. You know, any, everyone would benefit from being a better communicator. And I, I know you'd agree because that's literally uh, what you've been talking about in a lot of your reels that you've been posting about, you know, speaking engagements and how to, how to connect with people, right? So yep. that's what I went in there wanting to learn and come to find out that it is so much more about, you know, how you can build your confidence, how you can change habits. And a lot of it is, you know, taking action, which is one of my favorite things to do and, and tell people to do. And then of course, just having a positive focus on it, meaning you can't let your eye off the ball. You got to consistently take action towards said goal, basically, or said habit. Yeah. You know, uh, what are your feelings on the concept of like manifesting? Uh, so this is a good one. Um, it, it's such a, broad word. And I think a lot of people have different definitions of what that looks mm -hmm. like. So for me, I, I was introduced to what we'll call it positive affirmations, right? Uh, mm -hmm. when I got into the shooting sports. So, you know, growing up, I was not a good athlete. Uh, I was, pro I'm probably one of the most uncoordinated, coordinated people you'll meet. So I didn't necessarily get that, you know, kind of coaching that you get from standard sports, you know, where they teach you how to, you know, visualize something and go after something. So, I had to learn this in my adult years. So when I got into the shooting sports, I was introduced to positive affirmations where let's say you've got, you've got the physical skill, right? But most everything in sports, in per performance, right, is all up here. Probably 90% of it is actually your mental state. So I had to, what I found was I was, I was consistently getting 
like, um, so the way they rank you in shooting is percentage. So let's say first place is 100%, right? And I was consistently in the 60%-ish, which just, I, I don't like to be mid-pack, so it's just driving me up the wall. And, you know, through some self-development and reading that book with winning in mind, I found it was because I didn't believe that I could win. For whatever reason, you know, who, you know, years of baggage from childhood, whatever, maybe the environment that I was in at the time, for whatever reason in my brain, I didn't believe that I was capable of getting first place. So I spent, uh, I've, I've read that book probably three times, listened to the audio book as well. And what Lanny teaches is visualization and positive affirmations. So he, he teaches there's three parts of your brain, right? There's conscious, unconscious, and your self-image. Conscious would be like, uh, let's see here. Do you drive stick shift? I can, you, yes. You can? Okay. So do you remember when you were first learning how to drive manual transmission? You were like, okay, I got to push in the clutch. I got to shift yeah. it. You know, it was a very conscious effort. And then eventually, yeah. you know, throughout however long it took you, it now becomes an unconscious thing, right? You turn, up, turn the car on and you're at your destination. Well, your self-image is how you view yourself doing that. And I think that's one of the things that they don't teach us when we're young and, 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 and coaches don't teach this is how you view yourself because that's what's going to change your habits. That's what's going to make you, you, you know, who is Kimmy? Who is Ryan? You know, your self image. So, so what he teaches is visualization and positive affirmations to basically change that. So, you know, for whatever reason in my little monkey brain back here, I was thinking I'm not allowed to win or maybe I'm just not capable of it. So I literally wrote down I am a winner. I always win. I always shoot perfect shots. Um, and it's all stated in present state and it's all positive. So you can't say, oh, I never miss. Oh, I, I don't do this. You know, because what happens is your brain only focuses on the, the don't piece, right? Um, for example, if I tell oh, – you have kids. So do you remember mm -hmm. like when, when they're little and you tell them not to spill something? What do they do? Yeah, they, it's going all they over spill the table. The, yeah, they spill it all over the place, right? So instead, you could, you know, you can reframe it and say, hey, please be careful or, you know, please hold on with two hands, you know, whatever it might be. But but it's it's programming that positive aspect of it because uh, both, again, both Lanny's book, NLP, a lot of these self-development things that, you know, you're involved in, I'm learning, it's all – we're programmed at a young age we're negatively, you know, whether it's society, the environment, being told no, uh, being told to focus on one thing, um, you know, it's that's what we grow up around. And we're not taught to do self-development. I think we're talking about that. I'm not sure what part of the recording you're going to be using, but when we first started, we were talking about how we're not taught to focus on self-development, you know, when, mm -hmm. we're, when we're young. Um, I would say I had a really great English teacher in high school that kind of planted that seed for a lot of people, but I think that's really rare. Yeah. Think about, uh, for all the parents out there, think about your ratio of do more of that to don't do that so that you give to your kids. I mean, just every day your kids walk through the house, live in their life. How many do more of that do you give them? Like, hey, that's great awesome. Do more of that. In instead, it's don't do that. Don't sit there. Be quiet. Don't listen to that. Don't watch that. Da -da -da -da. All don't, 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 don't. And then it's like, why don't my kids want to be the best at this? Or why are my kids getting C's in class? And it's like, because everything they do, they get a don't. And they're not, you know what I mean? And it, and it is very limiting. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of it. You know, for me, it's it's funny. I thought manifesting was the biggest load of bullshit I had ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. I read The Secret. Uh, I blew through it. I thought it was stupid. And I was like, this is all just kind of, this is like foo-foo-y, hippie shit that they sell to people who are, you know, just willing to spend their money on nonsense. That was my original thought. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then about three years ago, um... I was listening to Andy Fursella, uh, who does the Real AF podcast, who love him or hate him, has a lot of value to add to the world. Uh, and 
he talked, he had an episode where he talked about how manifesting is a big part of his life. And it shocked me. I literally had to re-listen to like the five, like I had to like rewind five minutes in the show and like listen to it again. Cause I was like this big, tough, bearded, strong, owns this big, like I'm like manifesting really. So I started listening. I, so I listened to it and then I started like searching other podcasts that I listen to that I respect and trust for episodes on or that related to manifesting. And it was crazy. So I started, so I started doing all this research and like what ultimately sold me was kind of a very trivial example, but it, it rings true to me. And it was like, when's the last time with like with, when you bought a car, right? So say you're, 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 you buy a car, all of a sudden you see your car everywhere, right? So Absolutely. like you never yeah. see that car. You've never seen that car before. You've seen two of them ever in your life. And then you buy it and there's two every time you drive the car, right? And mm -hmm. it's because what you have done, and this is what manifesting, this is this is my understanding at its take take like the universe out, which I don't necessarily not believe in this anymore, but like, you know, the the take the universe stuff out, take any of the the uh psychoactive aspects of it out of the equation and simply what you're doing is telling your brain to look for that thing. That's just all like at its core, at its simplest, at its most basic, all manifesting is is saying, you want to sell more by telling yourself that you can sell more, that you will sell more, that you, you are selling more by telling yourself that, by I will sell this. What you're doing is just telling your brain, look for those opportunities. So now all of a sudden you look for these things to sell more. You look for, uh, go, you know, maybe, maybe it goes for a partner. If you're looking for a partner, I'm looking for someone who insert the thing all of a sudden you, all you, what you've done is say, don't worry about these things. I'm not so interested in these, but these particular things I want you to focus on brain because, and one of the most important books that everyone can read is the untethered soul. If you haven't read the untethered soul, make it the next book, like literally stop whatever book you're reading now and read the untethered soul by Michael Singer next. Have you ever read uh -huh. that book? No, I'm putting it on my list now though. Yeah, it's it's fucking incredible and you'll fly through it. It's a fairly easy read. But but the concept is is something that I have believed for a very long time, which is you are not your mind and you are not your body. You are your soul or your spirit or you know depending on what sure. religion you yeah. are, you what you are is a different name. But the idea is we are not our mind. Your mind is just a it's just a a computer program that operates the the body, right? But neither one of those things are you. So what manifesting is, is your soul telling the fucking computer in your brain, hey, dummy, start looking for these things. I want this thing. Start looking for it. Like if you want to buy a new car, hey, I'm, I want a new, I want a new Tahoe. All of a sudden you start seeing Tahoes and you start seeing sales for Tahoes and you start seeing used Tahoes and you start seeing, uh, uh, accessories Tahoe on Tahoes. Because Facebook yeah. listens to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. All, yeah. All, yeah. Yeah. You're, oh, yeah. All of a sudden, all, both of our phones will be filled with Tahoe's. Oh, but absolutely. Like, but the, I, but the, the con, but that concept to me, all of a sudden, I was like, well, that makes complete sense. Like, yeah. okay, manifesting isn't the universe, you know, aligning with my psychoactive, you know, whatever bullshit, which, which may or may not be true. I'm not going to comment on that. But, but this simple idea of the computer that runs your mind. You're just giving it the programming. That's all you're doing. You're just you're just executing a function uh, inside your your mental computer, and that exactly. to me makes sense. And I can say that early results are very positive. Yes. So literally everything that you just said is NLP in a nutshell. It's all about that programming. You know, and you you could call it you know the soul or the self image or your identity, your unconscious mind. It all you know ends up being the same thing at the end of the day, and it's how you reprogram yourself to do X, you know, whatever it is you might want to do. That is so cool. And I'm going to go get that book now. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, the book's good. Un awesome. Untethered Soul is, uh, it, was it was recommended to me by three people that I really respect, like at different times. Mm -hmm. And finally I was like, fuck it. Like I need to go get this book. If three people now have referred it to me, I read it and now I recommend it constantly. It just, because I, I believe that so much of the trouble that we face in our in our lives is is misunderstanding mm. the signals that we're getting from our mind and our body with our soul, right? Like we feel physical pain 
from a workout and we somehow think that's us. That's not us. That's just your body. It's not even, it's not even real. Like it's not you, you, your spirit isn't feeling physical pain. Your body's feeling mm-hmm. physical pain. That's it. So you can work through it. You can push through it. You can tell your body right. it doesn't hurt. And some people like Wim Hof get so good at it, they can literally reprogram their body in real time so that they can operate despite physical pain or whatever, you know, exposure to, to, to different things. I mean, yeah, to and, ice cold elements. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see those things and you're like, holy shit, how does he do it? Right. And it's when you really break it down, what he's, yes, what he, yeah, yeah. As for those not watching the video, Kimmy was pointing at her head, um, you know, the, the, what he has figured out how to do is disconnect his, what I call it soul. So your soul or your spirit from his mind and his body and just basically say, yeah, that's not real. Like, stop doing that. Like, I don't want to feel I'm, oh, I know I'm okay. So don't feel physical pain right now. And that is incredibly difficult to do. I'm not saying that this is something you can just snap your fingers on a hundred percent. I mean, obviously there's courses, there's all kinds of things. This is years and years to like be able to get to that level. Nor do I think most of us, the vast, vast majority of us need to get to Wim Hof level of connection and, or, and, or ability to disconnect from those things. However, the reason I bring this up is to come back to my original statement around preparation, which is if you are mentally healthy, if you are physically healthy, if you are emotionally healthy, and, and, and by healthy, doing the work, right? We all, it's always, but you're doing this work, you're preparing yourself. Then when that thing happens, that person leaves you, the job ends, the, the, the investment you made goes belly up, the company you started doesn't end up becoming what you thought it was going to be, whatever the thing is, right? You can disconnect and say, this is not who I am. Right. To your point, I am not founder of Rogue Risk. That is a thing that I did. That is something that happened during this brief period of time for this physical body, but it's not who I am. I can keep going. Right. And that, that, that preparation allows you to weather these storms and keep going. And that, that to me is, um, that to me is the key. You keep hearing people like uh, someone said the other day, it was either Cody Sanchez or Alex Ramosi, one of the new like thought leaders that have popped up in the last like Which are both two. great. So anyone listening yeah. to this who don't follow them, go follow them. <laughs> yeah, they're tremendous. Yeah, absolutely yeah. tremendous. They're like the next wave of uh, really, really, I mean, really good. They're very good. I, I keep trying to find holes in their game um, and I, I struggle with it. They're doing a really good job. Um, but one of them just said the other day, and this isn't new, but they just packaged it in a really interesting way. And it was something like, um, th- the only reason I'm successful is because I outlast every, I'm, I'm willing to outlast people. Like that's Win literally all. Win attrition, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah. when you think about it, you're like, that really kind of is it. Like, just are you willing to keep going when everyone else stops? And yeah. if you are most likely going to be successful, like, man, that's, you know, that's, and I think, that goes back to preparation and being, you know, all this stuff. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. I find this stuff to be incredibly interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm 20 years into my insurance career, 26, 27 years into my working, you know, kind of real world working career. And I can't find one example in my life where tactics is the reason anyone failed. Hmm. Yeah. Everybody, every time I failed, Every time anyone I know has failed, it's been because of emotional shit. It's been because they couldn't keep their shit together. They told, you know, they didn't do this properly. They couldn't handle the stress. They were too egotistical. They were too insecure. They didn't have the right communication and personal skills. They couldn't read a room. They couldn't listen. They couldn't, you know, whatever the thing is, it wasn't because they couldn't figure out a fucking lead funnel right? Now those things help. Don't get me wrong. But like, it's because it, the, 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 re, those are, you know, maybe small wins and losses in there because of tactics, but like true, like game over, you have to start again. In my opinion is a hundred out of a hundred times because of this stuff, because of oh, absolutely. personal development stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of to circle back, like around the sports arena about it being 90% mental, 10% physical. It goes exactly what you're talking about. You know, you could have the physical skill, you could have the you know, tactics down. Right. But if your mental game is not there, like game over, you know, and, and to yeah. circle back, you, you mentioned um, like Wim Hof and the, you know, people that, that are 
that can dissociate themselves from the emotion or from a feeling. Uh, that is that's something that I just recently learned how to visualize and how to do through you know through the trainings that I've gone through recently about when typically when people are feeling an emotion when you're like in it right you're seeing it through your own eyes so you are very well associated it is bright and clear and you're like Bleh, right so what they've taught especially these you know very successful leaders you know whether they're CEOs entrepreneurs whatever right they've learned how to take a step back disassociate it from it basically see themselves in third person to release that emotion right and i I don't, anyone watching the video, let's see if it shows here. I, I recently posted this on my Instagram. It says, take a step back and observe the emotion. <laughs> so that's something that I am, uh, I'm learning to do and, you know, learning to release that, you know, yuckiness. So that way you can make good decisions, you know, dissociated so that you're not doing it from emotion. Cause I will tell you what, I am one of the most emotional people out there. I cry. I, oh, I, I threw a temper tantrums, you know, when I was a child, like crazy, right? And learning how to disassociate, it, one, it allows you to, to get a different perspective. You might even be able to see the other person's perspective, which really is helpful when you're coaching somebody, when you're trying to have a hard conversation, when you're setting boundaries or you're, you're about to fire somebody. You know what I mean? There's a yeah. lot of emotions that can be attached to that if you don't learn to detach. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I wrote a post the other day about, um, you're not your feelings. And I got some people that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got other people that are like, nah, you know, that were disagreed with me. And, and, and I spent, you know, my, t I spent a decent amount of time reading through the disagreements and it was, you know, your feelings are part of you and God gave you your feelings and all that. And, I, I struggle with that because to me, your feelings and emotions are a mechanism of the mind. And what I meant by you are not, what I meant very quite literally about you are not your emotions is that your emotions are data points of the mind. They, they are actually important. If you feel a certain way, it is important to, to acknowledge I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling, you know, whatever the feeling is. Mm -hmm. But, and I, I didn't use this word, but I love it. This idea of disassociating because essentially if you're able to, to, to seal your word disassociate or separate yourself, I think is what I used from, from that emotion, you see it as a data point, not as like. As your interpretation reality. basically. Yeah. yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not brain. real. Mm -hmm. Yeah sadness is not real. Sadness is not your soul. Sadness is your, is a data point your mind is giving you to try to turn s s something, something kind of ethereal and manifest it into something tangible. And mm -hmm. so, so when we, when we feel sad, we can, we allow ourselves to be consumed by it because we think it's who we are. You. Yeah. It becomes your reality because you're seeing it through your your lenses. Yeah. yeah. Ryan is not sad. Ryan's mind is telling him that this situation has should make you sad, but I don't have to be sad unless I choose to be, or I don't yes. have to let it impact me unless I choose to be right. And, and that mm -hmm. concept is very hard. And so now let's apply this like to the business concept, right? So, so you, you are struggling with an employee who is maybe a high performer, but uh, maybe has a bad attitude or doesn't get along with people very well, right? Well, you could, they could do something or say something and you could, because you're feeling frustrated or you're feeling angry or you're disappointed in them. If you do not, again, stealing your word or dis disassociate yourself or separate yourself from that emotion, you can walk into their office and, rah, 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 and you need to do this. Or you could say, all right, what they did, I, I, I am feeling frustrated, angry, disappointed, et cetera. I feel that my mind is telling, giving me those data points. Okay. I understand that what they did was probably incorrect, right? But, but removed from the feelings, not allowing the feelings to be me, but to just be a data point, I can go in and say, look, here's, here's the feedback I'm getting. Here's what I saw. Let's talk about this. And you can approach it from a much more, um, uh, restrained, uh, much more, 
um, meaningful way because you're not you're not allowing that emotion to take over who you are. You're ju- it's just simply a data point in a series of data points. Hey, over here, man, I, this one time you jumped in and you helped Sally with this with this thing. That was awesome. I love that that version of you. That that thing. I want more of that. This part over here, and th- let's get to a and and, and that allows you to be a better leader. It allows you to be a better manager. It allows you to be a better husband, wife, spouse, partner, friend, parent, child, whatever. Like we just can't allow our emotions to become who we are because they're not who we are is my particular opinion. Absolutely. And I think the first time I really learned uh, to, to go back to like your example about maybe having to fire somebody or reprimand someone, especially if you're in a leadership position, is remember not to attack the person. You're attacking the action, the choice that they made. And I think really driving that home and reminding them to, hey, this is how I'm looking at it. This is not you. Your actions are not you. It's, you know, this is the piece that, you know, whatever you don't like. And, you know, I, it, it's called like, what is it? The sandwich effect where you have something great that you give them then give them the crap and then, okay, here's, here's something else that you did really well. Yeah. And you know, the, what is, is it called the golden? My high school something? football coach referred to it as a shit sandwich. Shit sandwich. Yeah. Hey, I really like this was, thing you did. I just didn't call it that, but that's basically what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. You did this thing. That was good. This, you did like an asshole. Maybe you could, you know, this over here, that wasn't bad either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's fair. Hey, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> And, you know, it's actually what's real interesting, this this brings me to a whole new topic, is how, uh, and, and I did not realize this until probably just last week, which sounds silly. I never realized how many people don't want or are afraid of criticism, or mm. even if it's constructive criticism. I think so many people are so scared to hear what they're doing wrong or what they could do better. And... I went to, do you follow Andy Elliott at all? I do. That I was, that was on my topic of questions for you. Okay, yeah. for so you. Yeah, yeah. I got to, I got to meet him on Sunday and be around a bunch of people that, you know, subscribe to his stuff. And I was like, wow, literally everybody in this room are here to, to be told what their gaps are. And I'm like this, you don't find that anywhere. It's so rare. I was also floored that 99%, and this is not an exaggeration, Ryan, 99% of the people there were men. Yeah. I didn't see any woman. Why did that Why did that floor you? What was your preconceived notion about men that made you think that they would not want to be in that room? I So, and I asked myself the same question. I was like, what, how come there's no women here? Uh, so I don't know if it is... Okay. So let me reframe that. Do you think it was, were you surprised that it was all men and women weren't there? Or were you surprised that men, more men were there? Like which, which one, or maybe both? Uh, I guess, I guess both. I was just more, and I didn't even realize it until probably towards the end of the day. You know, I'm doing, we're doing our thing. I'm taking on all the information. I'm taking, I probably got like 18 pages of notes from this. Right. And I'm super excited. And when I get up, you know, to, to go and meet him. That was the other, th- I think this is where I saw it. There's, there's a chance where you get to go meet him. You sign up for his hundred day challenge and the hundred day challenge is, is very similar to 75 hard where for hundred days you're, you know, you're doing a 45 minute workout, you're eating clean. And I'm thinking, Oh, the only thing in this that I'm not currently doing was reading 20 pages a day. I listen to audiobooks and stuff, but he said, no physical pages. You need to read 20 yeah. physical pages. I'm like, okay, cool. I can do that for hundred days. So I signed my ass up and also, I'm I'm like a marketer's dream. Like I'm a salesperson, so when someone has a really good sale, I'm like I'm buying it. So when I go yeah, to these yeah. things, I sign up for all the stuff, you know, because because they did a good job, right? So I was signing up for this. I'm in line, and I look around, and there's no but there's no girls, it next to me, and one of my what so this is me being real vulnerable on this podcast. One of my uh, intentions when I was at this NLP seminar prior to the Andy Elliott event was to make more connections with women. And so here I am at this event, like looking for some girl, you know, we can, we can be on each other's level and talk about this kind of stuff. And I, they are nowhere to be found. You know, maybe there's a few on, you know, on the other side of the room, but they're, they're walking out and I'm like, okay, what, what is happening here? So I ask myself, is it because women don't want to be criticized? Is it because there's more 
men that are in sales? Is it because maybe this particular culture just happens to be more guys in this, you know, sales culture over here? Um, so it it's something that I'm still exploring to find out like what it is. But I was just th- that yeah. was the one thing I really I walked away from that like, damn, like how do how do we recruit more women to that mindset of I I want to be told what my gaps are because that's how I grow. Right. So that is a hyper masculine culture for mm-hmm. sure. So I think that's probably part of it. I think that I think that while present culture seemingly wants to sell us something different, men and women are very, very different, both in the way sure. their brains are wired and their incentives and all different kinds of things. Not that that's bad or one is better than the other, just different. And not knowing anything about the program, I think that in general, there are just an absolute shit ton more men in sales than women. Just yeah, just there which, are. Which also and, was very, it just boggled my mind because yeah. like you said, I, I absolutely agree with you on there are absolutely differences between men and women. And, you know, we that's a whole nother polarizing topic that we can get into. But I agree with you on that. So So I leave room for that. But when I think about you know, even in the insurance industry, there's there are very many women in sales, very many women principals and leaders. Um, but yeah, to to see the I guess the lack of women, which was let, let me rewind a little bit. That was never important to me until recently, uh, and not specifically because I'm looking for you know some sort of gender equality you know um, uh, thing. I was just more like, I really want to connect with other women, other Mm -hmm. moms, you know, other, other people that I could relate to on a feminine level that I can't, you know, around a guy, you know, plain and simple, because like you said, we are different. So you're going to have very different conversations with the genders, you know? Yeah. Well, there's, there's a whole, I mean, there's a ton of viewpoints, ideas, activities, thoughts, feelings, et cetera, that. I simply could not empathize with that you could say to me. And it's not that I don't care or don't think they're important. It just, I just don't experience them or see them from the same vantage point. And vice versa. And vice versa. And vice versa. It, to me, you know, and and I have, you know, I think, I think, so, you know, there, there's been, there's been some stuff in our industry recently, some shakeups and different groups, et cetera, that I don't want to necessarily name explicitly, but have involved um, uh, women in particular and I think that I, I, I'm, I'm of two, two very different minds on the gender thing. Part of me says, uh, one, um, like, so, so I am a staunch equality of opportunity guy. And I hate equality of outcome. I loathe it. I, I, am, I, I cannot even, I can, I can't. Like the idea of it, I find very hard to swallow. And I'm sure there are exceptions to that that I would be willing to accept, but they are very, very rare. However, I have even more, I have even more distaste for individuals who remove opportunity for people. So like I look at something like, um, you know, look, more women are nurses than men, right? Mm-hmm. So is there do we have a equality of gender nursing problem? No, because women, for whatever reason that I don't understand because I'm not a biologist or a psychologist, they choose just out of their choice, choose nursing more than men choose nursing. Okay. And for yeah. whatever reason, in sales, men choose to be sales professionals more. So there shouldn't necessarily be an equal number of men and women in those professions. However, every woman who wants to be a sales professional and every man who wants to be a nurse who has the skills to do it should be allowed to do it and should be given every opportunity to do it. And this is the battle that I feel like we're missing. Like, because today there's so much non completely nonsensical socialist talk. I mean, this is all socialism nonsense. This is postmodern Marxist bullshit that, that somehow we need to have equal number of every ethnicity and every gender. Mm, and all yeah. this stuff. And it's like, there's literally not even the same number of humans 
of all these things here to have equal numbers. Like the percentages don't match. Like if you were to have 50, 50, you can't have 50, 50 white people and black people in every industry in the country. There's simply not enough black people in the country to do that. There's exactly. not enough Asian people to do that. There's, you know what I mean? If you were to take white people and put them in Nigeria, there wouldn't be enough white people to do that. Like it's, this is the nonsense. However, the thing that we have to fight against, I believe tooth and nail with every ounce of energy that we have is to make sure that anybody that wants that thing gets an opportunity to get it. They're not blocked. They're not, they're not talked negatively to, they're not d- discriminated against they're, They, they have every opportunity to be the thing as everyone else. So when I look at, when I look at situations like uh, the one you were presented with, right? Highly masculine, highly sales oriented thing. What I think more often is the case is probably, and I think this is particularly for sales. I do believe that women are still not given the same opportunity to sell that men are given. I think that if you put a man and a woman applying for a sales job, that if they're both equal, the benefit of the doubt today is still going to skew towards the man if their skills are equal. And that's the thing that we have to fix. Exactly. That's the thing we have to fix, in my opinion. I will say, I will give big props to Andy um, that I didn't get to mention before. So one of his top salespeople is female. And he did. Yeah, and he I wasn't making a knock on him. I, oh, I yeah, don't. I, yeah, yeah I, I just was want to make sure yeah. in case he was listening. Like, don't worry, Andy. We're not talking smack about you. Yeah, no, but I'm I, not. A hundred percent. Not not talking about his event. Just talking about the fact that there is such a disconnect in numbers. I oh, feel absolutely. Like if 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 more women were given equal, the more of the women who wanted to be sales professionals mm-hmm. were given the same opportunity to be sales professionals that men were, they're most likely would be more in that room agnostic of Andy's program. So just, just, oh, I just, oh yeah, I thousand percent. And, I, and I think too, one of the, the situation that you're referencing, I'm privy to as well. You know, we don't, we don't have to dive down that, but what to around that topic and kind of every, just to kind of circle back on everything we talked about, it all comes down to my favorite word, respect, right? So regardless yeah. of somebody's, you know, gender, spirituality, whatever, you know, everything that we're talking about, right? If, if, you respect them and where they're coming from, you're, you're going to give them the opportunity, you know, plain and simple. And I think that's what's been really cool about everything that I'm, that I'm diving into is now I get to learn about these things because I will be the first to tell you I was so naive to, you know, everything that we're talking about, honestly. This is all very new to me, stuff that I'm just diving into, you know, I grew up, you know, in, in male dominated sports and, you know, and, I got into sales at a very young age. So for me, it was just, oh, I'm in sales. I never, I never realized, oh, well, I'm a female in sales or, oh, I'm a, you know, some, sometimes I forget that, you know, my heritage is considered a minority and I never, I never put a label to that. So it wasn't until recently that I, you know, start hearing these labels and, and becoming more aware of what other people are seeing and why there is a need to fight for opportunity, like you're saying, because I never, I never realized that until recently, until people bring that my intention. I'm like, well, wow. Like, well, what, how come I didn't see that before? And what do you think that's mindset- positive though? Like, do you think it's a positive one, uh, uh, uh assume like in, in a, in a, in a, in a, um, in a fictional scenario in which there are no barriers of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Does it, does it matter? Like, do you want, do you want like this constant and unending, like, focus on where we're from. Like I, I, I struggle with that. Like, I'm like, I get it. Like I, what I miss is when it used to be fucking cool that we were different. Like right now when it's I was mainstream. in high school, like, I don't know the, I, I hate to say, you know, like, I don't know, like the, I always looked at the black kids and I was like, they're so much cooler than I am. They dance yeah. better. They can sing better. They their their styles way better. I was always like, want I wanted to hang out with them. I was like, they're fucking cool. You know what I mean? They didn't want to hang out with me. They're just dorky white kid from the country. You know. So like, it's I always look at it like I, I loved our differences because it's what made the country so interesting. And now it's mm-hmm. like, oh no no, you know what I mean? We all have to be this blended version of each, where we're all exactly the fucking same. And it's like we're not the same. That's the amazing part of it. But we have to focus on the differences if opportunity is not the same, if the access to opportunity is not the same 
and again, so my personal opinion is capitalism solves all this. Capitalism solves all of this. This is all postmodern Marxist bullshit because, because capitalism, if you're a capitalist, you want whoever's the best. You don't give a shit. You don't give a shit if they paint uh, Smurfs on their face and show up to work every day, if they can fucking sell, you're going to hire that person, right? Like you yep. don't care. You well, don't it's metric, care. it's metric based at that point. Yes. And I think, it, and I actually think that you and I touched on this on our last podcast a little bit too, yeah. about how it's become mainstream, you know, to, to do this, you know, X, Y, Z. And I do agree with you on the differences. And if, if you listen to, well, let's talk about Cody Sanchez or Alex yeah. Mosey or even Andy Elliott, all of them say, be unique. Like, yeah stand out, really own your uniqueness, right? That's that's what's going to make you last through whatever craziest craziness you're going through. I think yeah. I think what I'm what I am looking to do is figure out what is preventing let's say a girl from going to like one of those sales seminars or yep. like uh what how can I help empower somebody to make them feel like they can do that too because I've always been a big, big fan of you got to earn it. You know, obviously I'm a, I like, I like the idea of, you know, opportunity. We want the opportunity to be there, but you still got to earn it regardless of yeah, yeah. where you're from, what you look like, you know, what gender you are, right? You, you got to put in the work and have the results, especially in sales. You can't just show up and, you know, sit there with your, yeah. your well, I won't, I won't say what I was going to say next, but yeah, uh, you can't just sit there, right? You actually have to do the work and, and show up every day. I bet that if you, I bet that if you reached out to 20 women, and said, hey, I'm going to this. I went to this thing last year. It was amazing. There was only like 10 of us there last year. I want to get another 10. I want there to be 20. Who wants to come? Sure. I bet simply by opening that door and reaching your hand out, I bet half of them would take you up on it. Because I think a, a lot idea. of times, I think a lot of times people just want to know like, so I think, I think one, look, you're, you, you're, you have a stage presence, right? You have a, you, you, post these pictures and you're screaming into a microphone and you perform and, and, and I'm sure you have your own insecurities and things that bother you, but you, at the same time, you, you, you have a, a confidence as well. So that is a unique quality of you. It's also unique that you're simply willing to post that stuff as much as you are. So many people aren't willing to put any aspect of their life out there in that regard. So I do think that, and I'm not, I don't want to go all like Spider-Man here, but I feel like I feel like with, you know, with great power does come great responsibility and, and being blessed, whether by nature or nurture to have any level of confidence. I think not everybody has that uh, naturally. Absolutely. I think they can develop it and it is beholden to those of us. And I would put myself in this category too, because although I have just as many insecurities as anyone, I also do have a lot of confidence in things. It's why I do this podcast is simply reach out to people and say, here, virtually take my hand and come along on this fucking ride with me because let because because I don't want to do it alone and there's there's so much there's so much here if you come so I think that if you did that you'd get 10 and then the year after that if you said all of them hey reach out to 20 of your girlfriends and 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 bring five more people each or two people each now all of a sudden there's 40 then there's a now all of a sudden you know now you have half the audience is women who feel comfortable and supported and energized. And I think that's how you get there is just one by one linking this chain of saying that here's my, take my hand, come along for the ride. And, and that's how you get there. Cause everybody I needs that. I show you the world. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Also, for anyone listening, like people pay really good money to get advice like this. So if you're next to a pen and paper, write this shit down because what Ryan just said, I'm I'm gonna go take action on. So thank you for sharing that. That yeah. this is probably the been, been the best part of the podcast is, is what you just said. And oh. and I will I will absolutely admit and tell everyone listening, I was not born with confidence. Let me tell you a little story. When I was in kindergarten. I had a presentation where I'm literally just telling some, I'm, I'm telling the crowd about what a fraction is, like how to explain half and quarters, right? And it gets to my turn. I probably turn paper sheet white and I just burst into tears and run away. I run away. I don't even do the presentation. I totally run away. And now, you know, now I am, I'm on a stage, I'm talking to crowd, I'm singing, you know, heavy metal music, you know, and it's, uh, it was absolutely learned. It was not natural yeah. for sure. <laughs> so, so 
what I would probably say is actually true is that there were always aspects of your life that you were confident in and there were other aspects that you weren't. And that Mm -hmm. what you have learned to do is allow the parts that you were confident in to start to disseminate into the other parts of your life. Because, um, and that's, that is not like, that's something I've learned over time. My mom says, you've been confident since the day you came out of me, you know? (laughs) And, 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 but what's funny is I don't remember myself as a, now today I feel very confident in myself and, but, and I feel like not that I'm always right, but simply I just try to walk through life as this is who I am and, and et cetera. But that is taking me years and years to, to, to allow that to, to break out of, of these very small pockets of confidence that I had into the rest of my life. And, and I think that, so, so one of the things that, that I have learned, uh, and, and look, I, I've learned all this from reading. I'm a ferocious, ferocious reader. I just read, I, I, I wouldn't want to show you my, my like books. Cause it, you'd think I was a fucking crazy person. You'd think I was like a, like a cat lady who's just sits inside with her. And I don't have a cat, but like, you know what I mean? Like I just, I have my reading chair with my little blanket and my pillows and my books stacked up next to them. And like, I love it. So I love um, it. I do have a question for you though, Ryan, because yes, I know yes, that yeah, you yeah, are ahead. ADHD. I want to know how many books do you read at a time? Right now I have three books going. Um, yes. <laughs> I have uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Uh, okay. Daniel Kamen. That one is Ooh. really heavy and it's just taking me a long time to get through. And to be honest with you, sometimes I just don't want the heaviness. Sure. Um, I am reading The 48 Laws of Power, which okay. um, is – to, is becoming a must read for me. Um, but I, it's very chapter based. So I tend to like, I'll read one chapter and I'll be done. Um, cool. and then I just started because it's kind of a fast read. Um, Patrick bet David's new book, uh, choose your enemies wisely. I'm a huge Patrick bet David fan. Mm, yeah. Um, I just, just love him. I love his story. I love the way he approaches life. I love his position on what it means to be a man because I feel like, I feel like, we men in particular have lost their way. They've lost their role in society. And I know, and, and look, I, I love women. I love strong women and please don't take this the wrong way, but feminism went way too far. Oh, and, I, I, yeah, I will absolutely get behind that. Yeah. For sure. I think that one women had been treated fucking horribly for a long time. Some of that was because we didn't, so I don't want to get into that topic. That's a different topic. <laughs> but the, the idea is men have lost their way, right? We, yeah. We are meant to be the protectors. Our body is built to shield women and children from shitty things. Like we're literally meant to be the cannon fodder so that they can keep going, right? Like that's yeah. that's why we're here. So, sure. but, but men have relinquished that and it doesn't mean you get to be a, that, again, that doesn't mean you get to be a fucking asshole. It just means you have, you know, come back in, be it. Get your shit together. Stop doing fucking drugs and masturbating all the time. Take care of your partner. You know what I mean? Like, like teach your children lessons that are meaningful and useful. Get a fucking job and make money. Like, it's important. Like, get be off the couch. Man. You must be Yes. Like, what is up God, with the Disney songs today? They're just flowing oh, out of me. <laughs> it's like, I just, I, I like look at it and I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I'm, I'm far from perfect, but like, God, you know, like, Hold the goddamn door for the woman when you take her out to dinner. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? It's not <laughs> sexist to open the door for her. God, I, I don't get it. Like, and if you're dating someone who thinks that it's sexist for you to open the door for her, get fucking rid of her. She's terrible. She is not someone that you want to be dating. <laughs> so, like, I just, I, I just don't, well, I don't understand. That, so, yeah. So, with actually, all that being said, I'd love to ask you a question about that. So, let's say alpha woman, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 let's say I'm alpha woman over here. What can yes. an alpha woman do to help support a man be a man? Yeah, just don't knock him down. Fair. Just don't knock him down. He's, yeah. he's trying just like you are. Now, respect. he should not knock you respect. down either. Yeah. Yeah, come back to respect. He should not knock you down. I, personally, I need a strong woman. I, 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 I am... I, I for the women, you know, I'm, I'm single right now, but like the women that I date that I'm attracted to, I have to have a strong woman. I need a woman who is going to push back against me. I am crazy as fuck. I know that. Just listen to this podcast. Like, I can't help this. This is how I am. Yep. I need someone who's going to be able to take all this and then push back on me and be like, you know what? 
that shit you just said, that was nuts. But but have the respect to say, okay, well, shit, maybe she's right. Not fuck you, this is who I am. That's the right, way right. most guys react, right? No, That's so, how so there, most there women react as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a balance between like I need a, I I want I love strong women. Very important. It's very important to our culture, to our society, to our children, to our future. Hundred percent. But that doesn't mean that men should be betas, right? You need you know what I mean. There there needs to be a balance. And um and I think Patrick but David, you know, contextually you can tell again my ADHD is off the rails right now. Um, love it. Patrick Bet David is a wonderful, I believe, wonderful example of how to be. A, a strong man while still his takes care, takes care of his wife in the way that she needs to be taken care of. Not like she's this princess who can't handle her shit. You know, who's a better example, Alex and Layla Hermosi. Yes. The way Alex and Layla that. Hermosi interact as a couple, obviously we don't know their backstory, but you can watch her socials and stuff that they have a, uh, what, what seemingly is a very functional, relationship between two individuals who are both very strong uh alpha personalities and i think yeah. that's wonderful uh, cody sanchez and her husband you know i mean that's another one and i think you i think the rise of these people is because they are with someone who matches their energy and strength not someone who is pushing them down or that they have to lift up if that makes sense right yeah. like it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum Find someone who matches your energy and can rise with you, not someone who you're either pulling or someone who's trying, you know, quote unquote, above you trying to push you down. I don't know that, yeah. and I think that goes for everything. It goes for business partnerships. It goes for uh, friendships. Like I think it's very, very important to find people who match your energy, uh, you match your energy unique energy, and, and align with your values. I think that's yeah. You, you probably see me getting emotional because I've I've been there where you're just you're yeah. constantly your energy is sucked out of you from mm -hmm. trying to pull people with you because you see it in them. You're like, I see it. You can do it. Come with me. And they're just not, you know, and yeah. there's everything you just said just like resonated with me super deeply because that it, it goes back to the whole, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm trying to find, trying to find my tribe, you know, like, cause yeah. that's, you know, that the cliche saying of you're the average of the five people, like it's, it's true though. The so, who you surround yourself true. with is such a big deal in true. how you show up every day. They're the people that are going to hold your ass accountable. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If if I can't, if let's if I slip up, I want someone to tell me, "Hey, that that was dumb, Kimmy. Like, let's you know, let's fix yeah. this. Otherwise, how the heck are you going to grow?" So I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you something, and then we can call this we can call this quits. Um, Sweet. So um, there is a there's a program, um, and it, it's a book. Uh, it's called Living Your Best Year Ever by Darren Hardy. So I Chris Paradiso Hardy. originally introduced me to this. I tried to do it on my own two years ago and failed miserably. Okay. Mm. This really needs to be done and is meant to be done with an accountability partner. So I have an accountability partner this year. Um, one of my very good friends. Uh, we talked for almost a month before we decided to do this, right? It was yeah. like, do we feel like, because we're friends, do we, do we feel like this is going to work? Right. And we had that talk. Okay. Boom. And then we've spent basically since September doing the pre-work, et cetera. And my point in saying all this to you is that he is the type of individual who, if I say something, I can trust because of using this program and the structure that it gives us to have conversations, the accountability associated with it, and then to your word, the respect between us to make sure that we stay on task. And I can tell you, we haven't even gotten, so the program technically is supposed to start in the new year, right? You go, you go calendar years when the program starts. And in the fall, you do the pre-work, which is what we've been doing. And although you can start at any time, just so people know, but, um, but I can tell you just in doing the pre-work, and surrounding myself on a regular basis with a high functioning, highly successful individual who is willing to give me honest and real feedback just in the last two and a half months, I have seen an ascension in my day to day life. Just, just, just the way that I approach things, the way that I, the decisions I make, you know, don't eat that. You don't need it, right? You're not that kind of person. You're not the person that 
eats that cookie at two in the afternoon, right? Like, or whatever it is. And, and so finding that person or people is almost like if you, if you're unhappy with where you are right now, make that the next thing that you do. Like the very next thing you do is, is who are my one, three, five people that I want to surround myself with? Because if you do that, just by osmosis, you'll fucking become happier. You just will. Absolutely. And imagine if you had business partners, a romantic partner, a, you know, whatever, fill in the blank that can do that for you, that can have those kind of conversations. (laughs) Like imagine what world would be like, right? Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you. Ooh, report back. (laughs) <laughs> I'm excited for I'm excited for you. I love it. And any I mean, just outside of this, anytime you have thoughts or hey, did you see this or whatever, send it over. I, I love it. Yeah. I'm so happy for your journey. I'm happy you came on Thank here. You. Um, come back again. Well, let's do this again Will in six do. months or so. We can do check-ins, we can talk. Um, I yes, think it's wonderful. Please. I love I, I pulled you pulled out some great stuff. I love the training. I love um um uh uh, uh what is it? Winning the mind within what's what's the book? Uh, with winning in mind, I'll I'll send you with, the link on it too. I I awesome. literally I I probably have ten of those books here. I just give them to people when I hear them struggling. I'm like, read this, <laughs> awesome. and it, it's so we're, it's about shooting sports and it's about mental management, but it all applies to everything, right? Love it. So we'll have with winning in mind and untethered soul linked up in the show notes for everybody. I love the word disassociate. Um, I think that's a wonderful way of viewing it. Disassociate yourself from your mind and your body. I think that's tremendous and that we should all treat each other with respect. I'm going to Shaboom's!